The stock market was down over 500 points. Then it went higher. First, Apple was down because of bad news out of China. Then for no good reason, investors bought the dip. Debt has skyrocketed. The entire financial system is relying on the Fed to be quote accommodative in their policy. But if the economy is actually strong, why accommodate? It's been nearly 10 years. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at several economic indicators. It's going to be an in-depth video. I will show you a lot of data, so let's begin by taking a look at what is happening on Monday's trading session. At one point, there is this report of the Dow Jones dropping 500 points as the market sell-off continues, bank shares lead the slide. But we are now at approximately 2 p.m. as I record this video, and stocks are about to go into the positive territory. Why? There is no good reason for that. In fact, Apple right now should be a stock that is coming down into the red quite significantly on the new news that has been released but instead of course it's positive and I'll show you more about that in a second but this is much more important the Fed if it keeps hiking rates will cause a recession that's according to this individual Stephen Moore former economic advisor the only thing that really worries me about the economy right now is what the Fed is doing that's what I've been saying for quite some time the Federal Reserve the central banks they control Control the markets. The Fed is what's going to put us in the next recession if they keep raising rates. I make that the title of my video, I'm criticized. But this economic advisor gets applauded for his ideas that the Federal Reserve should stop hiking rates because it's going to put the economy into a recession. Well, it's pretty obvious that they're the ones who created the boom in the first place, so why shouldn't we take the crutch away and see if it can stand on its own? Because everybody knows that it can't. The Fed is expected to raise interest rates again next week, but the market is now putting low odds on any hikes next year. So right away, we were told that December was a given. For sure, they were going to do so. Next year, they were going to do it approximately three times. They can't raise rates now, though, because the market isn't looking so wonderful as it was the remainder of 2018 up until October. But we've got some other issues that have come up in the recent past. And we have this article pointing out a few important factors, such as China's stocks are down more than 20% this year. Shares in Germany are down 16.5%. In Japan, stocks are down about 5%. And in Britain, they're down more than 10%. Right now, the UK is hurting because of the Brexit issue. There was this talk that they were going to be able to separate. And yet, it still hasn't happened. Here we are years after the documents have been signed and everybody voted and it looks like it was going to happen. There was so much cheering and celebration and fighting, of course, on both sides. And here we are still arguing over the same business. But even in the United States, there are emerging pockets of weakness, particularly in the parts of the economy that are sensitive to rising borrowing costs. Pending home sales have declined for eight straight months as interest rates on 30-year fixed mortgages have climbed monthly. Auto sales have plateaued, prompting job cuts at GM and Ford. And we're hearing a lot of details that many other companies are starting to lay people off as well. That's not a good sign for an economy that could really, really use it at this point. This is late in the cycle, no matter who you ask. The stock market has mirrored those concerns since the summer. Shares of car makers and auto parts manufacturers are down more than 25% this year. Shares of home builders have slumped nearly 30%. Look at all these factors piling up. And yet we still have a media that is destined to keep you in the dark. Well, take a look at this. Fed's Bullard, who, by the way, had suggested they will do a QE4 a little while back, maybe 2015 or something. He suggested, why not? Let's do a QE4. So this is a very, very interesting character, that's for sure, who doesn't really care about inflation to any degree. Fed's Bullard becomes first on the central bank to suggest delaying December rate hike. Here we go. So we already have the suggestions that it is too 
tight of a monetary policy. What does that tell you about the situation that we're in today? If you look historically at the Fed funds rate, whenever they stop increasing rates, that's as far as they got. They never were able to keep it there for, let's say, a year and then increase again at that point when the economy started to do better. That was basically the time in which we entered a recession. That's what happens historically this time around. I don't know. I'm not an oracle, so you'll have to check out the financial experts. They're available at every turn. St. Louis Fred President Bullard said that the central bank could delay an anticipated December rate hike. He cites the inversion of the yield curve earlier this week as reason for caution. So the Federal Reserve themselves are taking a look at the yield curve, which I don't even want to say it, but I have to because this is the type of information that I've been bringing and the Federal Reserve actually concurs with the information that I have brought to you. So I hope that you'll take it and you'll be able to use it for your own good. That's all I'm suggesting. An inverted yield curve is often heralded as a sign of economic recession, though the time between the inversion and the GDP downturn has varied widely. And I do agree with that. Now, looking at Apple at the time of this recording, it made it into the positive territory and it's no question that this is a complete buy the dip strategy because earlier in the day we had information that came out that suggested that they were not going to be able to sell as many phones in China it was a done deal that's it and suddenly some big buyer comes in and takes advantage of the sale price currently on Apple. At least that's the way they see it. The market cap is sitting at $800 billion, a massive corporation by any means. And looking at the fact that this is big, but it's $200 billion less than where it was not that long ago. Last week, it felt like the bottom dropped out of the stock market. The blue chip Dow Jones Industrial Average plunged 4.5% for the week, ending with a 559 point route on Friday. The index was in negative territory for the year. The S&P 500 index has fallen into a correction, meaning it's off more than 10% from its peak. And the once high-flying tech stocks have suffered some of the heaviest selling, Apple, Facebook, Google, and all of the have all showed losses this year. The NASDAQ is in a correction as well. This tells us that the weakness is on so many different levels. It's not just tech shares. It's not just one particular stock index. It is so many different things all piling up. And then we flip the page to India. India's central bank governor resigned following a tense standoff with the prime minister over the bank's independence. In a statement on the Reserve Bank of India's website, he said he's got some personal reasons for stepping down. Now, he was there for a couple of years, and it's interesting to see what has happened as a result. This caused a little shockwave throughout India's markets, and you could see it's a sea of red right now at this time. Now, looking at this, it's just a small piece of the puzzle. Of course, tomorrow the markets can come up and that just tells us where it is. But the year to date, according to this, shows only a 2.65% increase. And that right there, it's basically a one year for the most part. We're looking at stock markets around the world declining. I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that very much. And last but not least, if you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have it all. You can actually flip through them. Just go over to Amazon. There's a look inside feature. It's going to allow you to flip through the pages of the book to see if you like it. Take care. If you're still here at the end of the video, I just wanted to go into a rant. If you're not interested in the rant, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you. So what we have today is a series of events that are taking place. But the core of it is the Federal Reserve's actions. And we can see that the Federal Reserve is actually engaging in exactly what has happened in previous cycles. Sure, they didn't have this quantitative easing program. Sure, they have gone far beyond where they had been previously. But the principles are the same. They are doing this intentionally that's my opinion but even if you don't agree with that you can still look at this in a way that makes complete sense every single time they tighten the markets crash every single time they tighten the markets 
crash. What does that mean for this time? Well, they're not going to let it crash this time. But what happened in 2008? Where were they in 2008? Did the Federal Reserve not exist? Well, of course it did. Were they not as smart back then? And now Janet Yellen is going to be able to never see a crisis in her lifetime or in our lifetime? That's ridiculous. It truly is. They always come out and suggest that there are no problems, that everything is just fine. But this is only propaganda being used to keep you in the dark. And it is done on all levels. When the World Economic Forum meets in Davos, what do you think they're doing? They're using their voice to ensure that the public keeps their mouth shut, that they just go on investing the way that they do, that they can have to put their money into something they're not confident about initially, but they are given renewed confidence because of all the biggest names in finance and politics and so on that are basically suggesting to them that everything is going to be okay. We're going to fix it. Look at us. We're gathering together. The economy is going to go strong. You have the IMF there. They're telling you that despite the crisis that it will come at some point. Don't worry. We're going to be there to backstop the losses. We're going to make sure that everybody stays really fiscally conservative and you have no reason to worry. This is all a lullaby to sing you to sleep and I hope that you won't be fooled by it. But if you're here at this point in the video, I know we're on the same page. That's all for this one. Take care.